Hi, this is Jamchester 2016. I'm here with some guys from Visor and a couple of other companies. Uh, let's see what they're up to. Okay, what's your name? Cool, my name's Lewis Dean. Uh, I'm the Joint Managing Director of Visor VR uh, and we make cardboard virtual reality headsets and tool sets to let game developers make virtual reality content for mobile. Oh, so it's, that's the hardware, cardboard and lenses and stuff, and the software? And the software, yes. And the software. Um, what are you up to? I'm Asan Solver and I'm Project Lead at Gateway Interactive, a partner company with Visor VR. Excellent. And uh, what are you doing here at the uh, event this weekend? So we've got two goals that we're here for. Uh, we've handed out 300 of these cardboard virtual reality headsets to everybody who came along. Uh -huh. uh, so we believe in democratisation of VR and kind of all developers having the opportunity to develop whether or not they have a 300 pound headset. Um, so we came, we're giving these out completely for free for everybody here. Uh, we're doing that in conjunction with Microsoft. Um, so we're also working to push our SDK which runs on Windows Phone with them. Um, and you know, we'll let you build the VR content for Android, iOS and Windows Phone. Yeah. Well, so, so this is like the Google Cardboard then set up, you can use it with an Android phone and things as well? Yes, uh, yeah. but we've also, we support iOS and Windows Phone as well. It's also all free. So it's kind of a, a cross-platform yeah. platform. That's great. And uh, so what, what are you working on here then? Oh, well, I've been here to like support Visor and help like uh, push the products and sure. help people out. Um, however, I'm also working on our own game here. Like, yeah, um, that you're not entering the competition, but you're, you're, work, you're hacking together your own, uh, building your own game. Yeah, what we're doing is um, we're working, we're currently working on an Xbox product, which we're basically, we thought we were Marvel Games the Spirits of a Game Jam and all like gathered together over the weekend and just like crunch on the game. Yeah. It's like a little team building session. That's, that's the idea. That's right. what we're up to. Let's have a look then. So this is something you've been working on before then? Yeah, so yeah. This, this game's about two this months old. This isn't just what you've done since last night? No, I, I, wish, I wish we were that quick. Um, <laughs> and we're working on a survival shooter game that's designed around uh, creating game mechanics that make you betray your friends. Um, so the idea is a bunch of you will jump into a multiplayer game together and it doesn't matter how strong your friendship is when you start, something yeah. in the game is going to make you that be stabbing an ass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in fact forced, it's more than encouraged, like you will <laughs> you betray somebody. It. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we've got the, um, the game is set on a deserted planet and the concept is that you crash land from a spaceship uh -huh. um, and there's 64 players in the level but they've only got a finite amount of air left on this deserted planet between you and you're forced to essentially scavenge resources together to try and survive as long as possible. Right, okay, so do you, then you're stealing air tanks off people's backs? Then? Yeah, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, and, okay. and the great thing about that is you never know when you're going to run out of resources or when one of your friends is and suddenly decide, you know, we've been friends for a while and I'm going to hit you over the back yeah. of the head and steal all your resources. It's not worth um, it. So the game, the game itself is only about three and a half weeks old, so in a really early stage with at the moment. Okay. Um, what we've been kind of primarily focusing on, uh, and I can show that... Is I, this the sky then, that thing that goes behind there? Yeah, so oh. we've been... We've I been thought it looked like you've, that was like a frozen trail of a crashed, uh, a crashed spaceship just on that ridge there. Uh, I think that was just coincidental. I think we've, what, the main thing we've been focusing on at the moment is this kind of um, environment design part. Yeah. Um, so if you have a look at this, this is the environment where the game takes place. Um, yeah, pretty beautiful. And this is a, a kind of a, a nice stylized, it's based on kind of 60s sci-fi art. Yeah. So you know that kind of really colourful, um, kind of like super simple but nice yeah. looking geometry stuff. Um, yeah, so this, this broken moon in the sky yeah. thing, that there was a... I think there's a Tom Cruise film where there's a broken moon. In yeah, the sky that kind of, I think it's the, Oblivion, isn't it? Uh, Oblivion, yeah. yeah. And then there's a couple of the films all within the space of a few years which all had a, 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 broken, like a broken up moon. Yeah. moon in the sky. It's because broken so. moons are cool. Yeah. 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 They're not cool. Um, I mean, they don't work physically. I mean, I no, it would, I mean, that should technically be going around the planet, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> we let's, let's not. Look and this, this makes no sense at all if you know anything about physics. But, um, yeah. yeah, so what we've been doing currently is trying to set the scene where all this is going to take place. You know, this is a 64, 64 kilometre map, uh -huh. um, which is absolutely enormous. It's the biggest thing we've ever built. Um, and we've, we've been working on kind of creating assets to... And where's the, where's really the origin point alive. for this map? Is it in the, in the centre then? Uh, so what happens is you actually start off the game um, on a spaceship uh -huh. that's crashing uh, and you have to choose to eject and throughout the level other players will crash down onto the map at random places oh, right, and okay. you'll see them kind of trail in and then drop onto the and then that becomes a conflict point because everybody gets there to try and get that player's equipment as they've just landed. Yeah. Do you always survive when you land them? From, from the when you land you always survive, yeah. The idea is like as you land though you're going to be um, either attracting players who want to help you and try build their numbers or players who want to scavenge from you and take your, your gear essentially. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. No, but uh, what I mean is when you, when, when if the map is 64 kilometers yeah. Of course. Um, do you 
is there any problems with it, with a map that with a map that large as you get near the edges and things? Or um, how, uh, how do you contain people within that 64 kilometers? Uh, with a radiation zone, as like most of these kind of oh, games right, do. So, so you're yes. you're just walking to an area that will eventually kill you if you yeah. carry on in that direction, um, which is a bit of a cheat, but it's, it's a nice simple way. Yeah. But we're going to be supporting vehicles and, and kind of rapid movement around the level and that kind of thing. So the idea is you don't kind of stay in one confined little corner. You, and you what are these what are these wireframe things here that we're seeing? Is that um, so this is this is part of the, the game editor that we're using. So we're building the game in Unreal um, okay. because we need something scalable for a game of this size. Um, and the, what these volumes essentially mean is inside each volume is is a procedural generator, and we don't place any of the art assets ourselves. It gets placed oh, by a procedural system. Yeah. Um, and, and so the, that's how kind of a team of four can create a 64 mile wide game. As they move around, it yes, it generates. Uh, oh, that's amazing. And what, what's over on this uh, other screen back here? Is this some character development? So this is Mark. Mark's the lead artist on the project. Hi Mark. Hey. So what am I working on here? Um, ass. I'd, yeah, some sweet ass. It's more curvy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm just working on the, the base player the, model. The first version of Lara Croft to the modern version, just in that switch from, yeah. from blocky to the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is the, the, the player model I'm working on currently. Yeah. Um, it's going to be the, the base for, for everything, um, and we'll, we'll use morphers and stuff probably to, to create the female version sure. of this from that. Um, so, male and female, is that the. Well, uh, do, you, do you get aliens? Uh, there's there's no aliens. No aliens, um, just humans. No, nah, just yeah. humans, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it'd be a bit of a cheat if an alien could breathe carbon dioxide then and he could mm. just like take take spent tanks off everybody and just is the, is the winner by default yeah. at the end of the game. Yeah. yeah. Some of us want to have some kind of ecological stuff for the planet. <laughs> and, and other of us yeah. don't want it's, to program the eye. <laughs> time constraints like the animation of like cool aliens and like whether or not we can get that in. Um, for the time being we want to focus on just like human interaction with each other. Yeah, yeah. No, no, but, uh, it sounds a really good, it yeah. should, sounds a good idea. But me and Mark yeah. are definitely rooting for the, for the alien life in there at some point. <laughs> and and we're, the ones, we're the ones who don't have to program the AI so we have to bully everyone yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. So who's the lead on this uh, game then? Alright, so Southland's kind of the lead designer, it's his, okay. his baby. Yeah. And where did this idea come from with this uh, anti-collaborative uh, approach? Um, it, it, I had a, this kind of, I used to play a lot of DayZ when it was just out and, and one of the things that always struck me is the most memorable parts of the game is where somebody you actually know in real life does something completely out of character. Oh, right, uh, yeah. and, and one of my friends had actually recalled the story of his first in-game murder where he just killed somebody cold blood because he wanted this stuff. And, and actually he he was quite disturbed by the fact that he'd had this he sort of interaction in the game. That, yeah. 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 And he I think he he did something like brutal, like he'd 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 come up to another player, he'd made friends with them, he's communicated, oh let's let's work together and the, the other player had opened a drawer and inside was a flashlight, which yeah. is a very valuable game item and Oh he just made the, the decision. The, the other there, player looked up and he just shot him in the back of the head. <laughs> And he, we just heard him yell from, we lived in a student house at the time, and Dad says, like, oh, God, like, and, yeah. But I, I, I want to try and build games that encourage that sort of, so that, that's what I really love about game design, when you're actually exploring human character. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's that's kind of what the what the goal of the game is. Yeah, to you, can, you can force people to not be themselves yeah. in a way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. Okay. Well, is he going to have a suit on when he's done? Yeah, yeah. yeah like I said, it's, it's all going to be modular. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it, it has RPG elements in the sense that the, the player can find or craft other helmets, shoulder pads, you name it, we're probably going to do it. Sure. Um, and it'll all kind of... We're using Unreal, so we're going to use the socket engine um, to attach it and switch everything out. Um, so yeah, it's basically just the, the skin, type, skin type character. This is his space moment. onesie right now. Space onesie. Yeah. yeah. I like space wetsuit. Space wetsuit. Space wetsuit. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. No, and then, um, and just another thing about the the, ga the gameplay. How long does it? How long does each game last then? Uh, it, uh, it depends how crap we are. I mean, if you look at games like Rust and Daisy, probably typically a couple of hours. Hopefully, yeah. is what we're aiming for. So you would. But we're also going to have a kind of a persistent server system where your character states save no matter what server you're on. Right. Um, okay. So you can carry your character state over a, you know, a, good, a week's gameplay session, it's not, not yeah. just kind of one day. Yeah, so you can stay with the same suit design yes. and, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, just w last question, yeah. you seem to have come here quite lightweight. Um, this yes. is taking the myth, yeah. isn't it? Just, uh, <laughs> it's a Franken computer, as we call it. So <laughs> it was, they were not suitable and we made them be. <laughs> Got some cooling going on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. No problem. Thank, Thank you. you.